Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Monday, December 4th. My name is Regan, and I'm documenting the collapse of civilization by means of abrupt climate change. This is what my soul calls me to do. Some men go on crusades or become master plumbers, dog trainers, carpenters, or what have you, but ever since taking journalism in college, which was my passion in the mid-20s to pursue telling the truth, I learned about climate change and was in denial for a few years before I came around to acknowledging the fact that there is no way out of our predicament. So this channel does rely on your support as I continue to do this out of my spare time and those others in this space need your support because, well, everything's expensive and also your upvotes, your thumbs up. So on that note, considering my last video got over 100 views but not 50 upvotes, we're going to take a quick moment here to give a tutorial on how to give a thumbs up. If you're on the phone, there's a little button right here. See the thumbs up? You press that. And if you're on a desktop, it's right below the, the viewer. You just you click it. So everybody take five seconds to do that. Come on, people. You got this. This channel is criminally underrated. Who else is telling the truth like this? Just a few people. And you can't do that? Come on. We can do better. All right, I'm going to cover four articles today, focus in on these, since it's gotten all the buzz. Climate Summit leader defends controversial comments because he's a shill for the industry. Surprise. This is the... Uh, summary of all 27 conference of parties where all the countries to get together to ensure the status quo. He alarmed scientists and sent shockwaves through the meeting. And really, he's just effed up because he said it wrong. It would have made slightly more sense if he would have reversed the order of words. And I'll go into detail. So, just days before the UN meeting, he says there was, quote, no science that says that phasing out fossil fuel is necessary to keep global warming, warming under critical threshold, which is itself wrong. However, there is no science out there or no scenario out there, this is what he says, that says that the phase out of fossil fuels is what's going to achieve 1.5. Okay? He says, quote, Please help me. Show me the roadmap for phase out. Excuse me, I'm... I'm using an accent there, excuse me. Please show me a roadmap for a phase out of fossil fuels that will allow for sustainable socioeconomic development unless you want to take the world back into caves. All right, just a second, let's dissect this. What he should have said was, unless you want to take the world back into caves or medieval era, then we must stop fossil fuel extraction, and refining, period. Also, suck the shit out of the sky. Now. That would have been a much more accurate phrase, and then maybe what Shatner said, or we're all going to die. Instead, he buttered up the words and said them in such a way that is wrong. And I know what he's trying to do. He says we need to be real and serious and pragmatic about it. Because everybody knows if we stopped all the fossil fuel economy going, then the medicine wouldn't get on the shelves, people would no diapers, people would freak out. Obviously, it would be world pandemonium. But he's he's a shell, okay? And this just I don't want to spend much more time on this, but he just encapsulates all of the conference of parties in one line, okay? This is why they failed. This is why Doctor James Hansen didn't go. And I applaud him for doing that. Cancel conference of parties. It's not working. We have people saying shitty things like this that just confuse and make it even more difficult to make any progress. Not like it would matter because we just learned that reducing air pollution would raise the global average temperature, would increase our watts per meter squared by like one, which is like another degree centigrade over low cloud cover. There's a whole video Paul Beckwith did over this. So, damned if we do, damned if we don't. We're screwed either way. But he just said it so crudely that it's an embarrassment. Okay, another embarrassment is 
switching gears into political matters, which I don't, it's uncommon for me to go into this on my channel. I shy away from politics, but it is all connected. We will admit um, the decisions that we made on a global level, it was organization of people, so, and policymakers' decisions, which have utterly failed us completely so far. So anyways, he he freaks out as Nero's disgusting award show speech. So if you haven't caught it, Robert Nero basically went on television and said, um, you know, He's lied to us more than 30,000 times during his four years in office. He attacks the weak and destroys the gifts of nature and shows disrespect. He's keeping up the pace in his current campaign of retribution, but with all his lies, he can't hide his soul. And he actually, the 80-year-old De Niro, who just had another child, are you kidding me, stumbled reading the first part of his speech, but doubled back and announced to the audience that his apparent confusion came from the fact that he, that his remarks had been excised excised from the teleprompter and he blamed apple for last minute ed edits quote how dare they do that actually so he probably had some much more firm things to say and the other highlights coming out this weekend is liz cheney dislike her but she is you know aware of the constitution we the people you know these these culturally indoctrinated people that think that we still actually have freedoms, that we still actually have a republic, okay? I see bumper stickers all the time in Ohio. And basically she's been coming out on air and just bombing him, you know, about how he would try to stay in power forever. He would, um, it would be a dictatorship. It's basically just going to, like, destroy the country, you know, we're going to withdraw from NATO. It's like the closing touches on the country, okay? And it's naive to think that the country would survive another Trump presidency. And my generation and younger people are for sure damn aware of this. Okay. A vote for Donald Trump, quote, may mean the last election that you ever get to vote in. A vote for Donald Trump is a vote against the Constitution, yet it's the same people that vote for him say that they're, just like everything, we contort the word, say that they are we the people types. You know everything I do is purely psychological, okay? I'm not left or right. We live in a failed republic. We are the most surveillance and spied upon peoples on the planet next to China and Russia, okay? You don't have rights and freedoms. Companies do. They are treated more like people than you. Surprise. I know the truth hurts. Could the 2024 election cause society collapse? Some preppers think so, and they're ready. And this is what I'm referring to, younger people. So this article in USA Today talks about this person looking at her home in North Carolina and sees disaster coming. Not hurricanes and other storms supercharged by climate change, barreling up the eastern seaboard, drenching neighborhoods, knocking out power and destroying roads. It's not the storms. She says she's worried that an incompetent federal government run like Trump or front or someone will botch the humanitarian response to a predictable disaster. She's one of growing people in number of both sides who are preparing for the possibility of a disastrous collapse of society after the 2024 election. You guys think I'm joking. She's 39. Okay, I'm 35. And relatively small but growing segment of people who are prepping, stocking up for some of you that can afford that. In the past 12 months, 39% of millennials and 40% of Gen Zers reported having spent money on prepping. On the left, you have people afraid of the Trump that's going to declare himself dictator, and and people on the left are going to end up targets in some sort of authoritarian system. He wants to send the military into. He wants to send them into cities. On the right, you have general malaise and a figure of society unraveling. They point to these smash and grab riot, you know, robberies and riots and protests. Um, they saw and felt something they could, they could not help, you know, or would not help. One side, people think that Trump may bring a new world order and they will come to get us, so they would need to be ready. On the other hand, you have the communities who think things will just get worse, so we have to help ourselves. She sees climate change as a worsening existential threat that the government isn't prepared for. Clearly, our own General Mark Milley had a report, was it 2020, said that, you know, the military could collapse by 2040. 
So the intensification of our natural storm seasons is the number one thing that's going to happen to you. An electromagnetic pulse that takes out the electrical grid could happen. A nuclear war could happen. A civil war might happen. But a storm will happen. That's how my generation feels. Okay? That's what we're preparing for. And it's been, uh, you know, of course people think of zombie infestation. And there's been that show, Doomsday Preppers. Um... But a poll found 67% of Americans think the country is facing either bigger problems than usual or is in the most troubled state they've ever seen. If you can't be prepared, you won't, you won't be a, a drain on resources needed to help the people who didn't prepare. Right? Wagner says it has a 90-day food supply set for her six-person family. Um, she works for a nonprofit, runs a YouTube channel, and like me... I want to help people. I want to create a society instead of wanting to shoot every stranger. Understanding our interdependence creates a better society. You know, someone... Okay, guns and bunkers and talks about this this, this community in Colorado um, pays 1200 a year for a different kind of life insurance. We'll have chow here when the collapse comes. You know, people are charging for... He has a 50 caliber rifle to disable oncoming vehicles, hunting rifles, plenty of pistols. All right, um, a pandemic could arrive, nuclear detonation, um, and the overwhelming majority of pe protests are peaceful. Some causes significant property damage in multiple cities and drew threats that Trump said he would send the military in to stop them. That could easily be a civil war during the Biden-Trump election. All right, so you have people all over left and right, you know, and have good intentions, you know, many of them, um, but, dude... We're in uncharted territory. How does this end well? Whether one side wins or the other, what does our country even look like? Intense news coming out lately, guys, and my eyes are wide open. I posted a video of my new firearm. Yes, as you know, I've got a pump action 12 gauge shotgun, which I'm doing a few modifications on. So it's not complete yet, but I posted this and I'm picking up a generator on Friday power generator and a can opener it's all you need and some woman I used to work with replied with like a sad face like tears like I know what she's thinking like you know this young guy I used to work with he used to be so nice and good yeah well things changed okay let me tell you I can't say that the pandemic of 2020 didn't not change me because it did right we don't come together in times of crisis we don't stand united we fight and claw for every little resource do anything to take care of our own right I saw families get thrown out in the street businesses board up it was it was against everything I was taught in school, you know, about being united and the Pledge of Allegiance, you know, all this brainwashing propaganda bullshit. No, we're a vicious and cruel culture. I'm not an idiot. And I told this woman too. I was like, I sent her a temperature. I was like, look, I, you know what's coming. I know, you know. So why are you surprised? I'm not a fool. Of course, I'm willing to offer peace and you know, a piecemeal, a piecemeal offering first. That's option number one. But when people get desperate, I don't know what the percentage is. Maybe 90% of people are just, you know, lay people, copacetic, calm, cool, you know, peaceful, work through issues. But there is that 10% of the population that I've, I've come face to face with, the bane of my existence, narcissists who walk the streets, mental disordered people, Usually eldest siblings, you know, who've been taught and told that they are the shit and they're the best in life. Makes them antisocial disorder. And not trustworthy. Not people you want to have in your tribe when shit hits the fan. Okay? And I have unlimited rounds for them. No, I'm not willing to make sacrifices for someone that has a mental disorder and can't learn to cooperate with others who will rape and take everything you have. I'm not a fool. All right, so this has been your, I know I took a detour with some politics stuff, but 
and prepping, but, uh, dude, it's about to get nasty. If this election doesn't do us in, add another four years, and then another few years after that, and we'll be beyond the range at which our planetary boundaries and us can keep up with, and people will get hungry and desperate. And you better start stocking up now, because you ain't no have no retirement. <laughs> yeah, that's that. I think I've said enough. December 4th. Appreciate you folks. Hit like and subscribe. I'll talk to you soon. See ya.